Hey guys, welcome back, Fast Monty's Garage. This is our plumbing episode to our fuel injection conversion series. If you missed it, go check out the first episode. That's where I discuss why I went from carburation to fuel injection and why I picked Phytech. So now that we're caught up, this whole time I've been talking about we can't plumb yet, we can't plumb yet, we don't have our hardware in. That's because we installed the force fuel system in the trunk, we finally got the throttle body on the engine, and we now know where to plumb to and from. That being said, Vitek has a couple different solutions for plumbing. This is a push lock AN fitting, which sounds exactly what it does. You put a rubber hose over it, push it on, locks itself in place. I'm going to go through how to use that, and I'm going to go through how to take that apart if you have to replumb. But what I'm doing my full system with is their new AN series of fittings and stainless steel braided hose. And those of you that don't know, if you install stainless steel braided hose and AN fittings in, in your car anywhere, and you do it properly, it will never leak. That's why my car is covered in it. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk you through how to do that properly as well. The last thing I wanted to show you is I converted my fuel tank to have AN fittings as well. This is a Rob MC Performance fuel tank, uh, fuel sending unit, and it kills three birds with one stone. One, if you don't have a return line on your tank or your stock sending unit, you can pull your stock unit, put this one in, you have a return line. Two, if you need more flow or less restricted flow to get to that electric pump that we're putting in, half inch lines with no sock on the end to impede our flow. I'll go through that as well in the trunk. And lastly, you have the option to upgrade to AN fittings. This is a dash six on here. You can get dash eight or dash 10. That's pretty awesome. And if you missed it, go check out that install video where I installed this already. Yeah, I know, it's already in the car. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's the magic of editing. Now. Let's get to the back of the car, measure some hose, and start cutting some tubing. Before we get in the trunk, let's talk about strategy and what tools to use here. So no matter what AN fitting you're using, attach them all to your mounting points, your filter, your throttle body, your pump, and then we're going to measure in between fitting to measure our hose length. So with the push lock style, Phytec has the fittings and the rubber hose. I like to cut that hose or any rubber hose for that matter, with PVC cutters. Super clean, super easy. Oops. <laughs> with Phytex system, they have 45 degree connectors and straight. The 45 works really easy. You can just push it right in. The straight, however, notice it's, it's loose. You can't really push it in that easy. So what you do is you either attach it to your hard point and push the hose on, or get yourself a cheap steel AN adapter, put it right in there. Now you have an installation tool. Push it all the way to the shoulder, put your hose clamp on, and you're done. Now, the problem is if you ever want to take this out and reuse that fitting, which you can, and this is stubborn because it's locked in place, do not, do not use a knife. That's a big no-no because you scratch that aluminum and you cannot use that fitting again and it won't be as reliable. So what I do is get a soldering gun with a cutting head and you can cut right through that. You won't damage the aluminum and you can pull that fitting right out. Voila, an easy trick from Fast Monty's Garage. Now, moving forward, traditional AN fittings for braided hose look like this. You have a nut that goes on the hose end and you press basically screw it on it presses on the fitting now these are aluminum same with the other fittings if you do not want to scratch them when you put them on get yourself an a and wrench so that says dash six on the end that matches the tightening portion of the fitting it may not match the other end or the nut end which i don't have the right wrench so i'm going to use either my adjustable a and wrench this blue one or a standard wrench just be careful if you're using a standard wrench, you can scratch this. Now, with AN fittings, I like to use the same manufacturer hose and the same manufacturer fitting. So Phytech hose comes with Phytech 
fitting options. So we have a 45 degree here, they obviously have straight. There's also 90s, which are in my trunk. If you need a fitting shape or style that Phytech doesn't have, you can actually use a Fragola fitting. Fragola is actually one of my personal favorites. This is a Series 3000. This is a 180 degree turn. I mounted it on my throttle body. I'll show you that later. And with that said, the way we cut AN hose. I used to use a fine tooth bandsaw, but now I use dedicated AN stainless steel hose shears. I'll show you that later. I also recommend getting some assembly lube. All the major AN uh, hose manufacturers have their own brand. Get some from one of them. And mandatory in my opinion, are jaws for your vice. These are aluminum jaws, so they won't scratch. They also have nylon, cost a little more, but are probably a little bit better for scratch resistance. Make sure you get those because you'll see when we put these hose fittings on the hose, it's not necessarily that easy. Woo, man, let's get in the trunk and start cutting some hose. Here's the craziness. So I have a 90 degree coming out from the tank into our high flow filter from Rob MC into our Holly pump. Holly recommends actually putting it 45 degrees, which works perfect. And then right into our inlet. Uh, from there, here's the return. The bottom one's return. And this middle one is our high pressure line going to the front of the car. This is how you set up your AN system. Doesn't matter if it's push lock or AN. And now we get to start measuring hose. So for AN lines, which comes in this big bulky roll, it's kind of tough to lug that around, so I actually get some old fuel line. And with our rubber hose, we can easily get a measurement. Now, if you're using the push lock method, so say this is the push lock, you would actually measure from shoulder to shoulder where, where the other uh, push lock connector is. But on AN fittings, it's a little bit more critical, especially when you have an inline fit where you have really not a lot of compliance in the hose you try and bend your hose to mimic the an hose if you don't have the actual an hose and then you have to reduce that length because inside the nut and i'll show you later where i put the hose in there's a step where the threading inside the nut ends and that's where the hose is going to end up so on our fitting here the hose actually ends up three eighths of an inch from the end so you have to reduce your hose length by three eighths of an inch on each side because of each nut. Having said that, I also like to make sure I'm on the same axis. And what that means is I want the hose on top of this fitting and on top of this fitting. So I have the proper length. If you go over here, that changes the length of your hose. So make sure you're measuring on the same axis, so to speak. So I'm going to reduce this side by three eighths like that. And eyeball it right here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use this as my template. Put it on the AN hose. I'll show you how to cut the hose. Put these nuts on. So we're going to put these nuts on and then go compare again. We're not going to put these on quite yet. I'm just going to cut it just straight up. And I want to show you something here. Notice how frayed that is. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Stop yelling. Okay, here's a closer look. So see how it's frayed? That makes it really difficult to put this nut on because this has to fit over that fraying area. So there is a way to prevent that. Check this out. In the kit comes this two rolls of tape. It's actually, those of you guys in athletics or girls in athletics, this is like pre-tape and this is for taping your ankle. So we're going to wrap this as tight as we can around where we want to cut on the hose with the pre-tape and then wrap it again with this tape. It feels like athletic tape. It's just a tape to keep the tension. So I'll show you how it works. So this white tape I'm taping as tight as I can. And our goal is to cut right down the middle. What that does is it helps eliminate some of that flare. So let's take this tape off. And then the pre-tape comes off because there's no sticky on that pre-tape. And that looks a lot better. So guys, just another quick tip. Um, 
Sometimes when you shear them off, you're going to get these pointy edges. If you use your thumbs, you're going to get pricked by the stainless steel, which gets old after a time. So use the side of your workbench and just push those ends back in so you get a little bit more roundness to your tubing. And now you can take your tape off and put that nut on. Now we can put our fitting on easier. So when you put the fitting on, I'm trying to get the camera to adjust, and you see the, the end of the hose should be right where that threading ends inside the nut. Typically when you put your hose in, it's not going to go all the way to that shoulder, so you're either going to have to tap it on your workbench, and or a combination of screwing it on, and you'll eventually get to the shoulder. So, see, I'm at the shoulder. So now that I have my nuts on my hose now we test shoulder to shoulder on the fitting so here's the shoulder here and then we have to make sure we can easily put it on the other shoulder and i can't that means i'm too long what i need to do and this is why we do it before we put it on this fitting because as soon as we put this fitting inside the nut it destroys that hose and we can't use about a half inch of hose but right now as i look at it i just have to take about a quarter inch off the end of the hose. So I'm going to take one, note, one nut off, tape it, cut it, and reapply it, and I'll be right back. Okay, I just took that quarter inch off, and we're shoulder to shoulder, just like that. Perfect. So now we can put these in. Let's go back to the bench. Now this is where our jaws come in handy, because doing this with two wrenches is extremely difficult. Believe me, I've tried it. <laughs> so get your oil, and you're going to coat these threads here. Because you'll be surprised how much force it takes to get this nut on and how much heat is generated from the friction. So here's my hose with both hands on it. And I'm going to start it on the thread. And we're going to tighten this all the way. If we can get all the way to that edge. Sometimes you can't get quite there. There we go. I'm going to put an angled end on this end. I'll show you the difference. Here's the other good use of our jaws. Since I'm using, I'm going to put in an angled fitting. I can't put the fitting in the jaws. I put the nut with the hose in the jaws and do the same process. Lubricate our thread, get it started. If you have a standard set of AN wrenches like I do, I only have even numbers, you might notice it doesn't fit. So don't, don't be shy. You can still use a normal wrench. Just be careful because you could scratch that. Now in this instance, this is a three quarter. It works perfectly. So we can just go right around all the way till we're done. Just like that. There we go. Now the end here, you'll probably notice, is called the swivel end. You can actually move it around, still won't leak. These ends are reusable. The hose portion is not. Let me show you, I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. All right, I got fitting out. Let's take this off. Bam. So now you'll notice inside there, the, the rubber hose is all torn up because of the thread we had to push it on. So you cannot use this end of the hose, but you can still use, reuse this connector. That's why they're so versatile. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remeasure my tubing and put them all together in the trunk and show you what I came up with. I know it might be tough to tell because it's black on black, but look at all the plumbing here. So we have our incoming from the tank to our pump. This is still five PSI-ish through a carburetor filter into the inlet of the force fuel. The return, so any excess fuel goes to the return, and that's that one. And then the high pressure line is right here on top. Now, I haven't forgotten, because there's still one more filter we have to put in. This is a 10 micron filter, so the other two are 100 micron, and we have to find a point. I'm going to find a point midway between here and the engine, because that will make running our longer hose easier, so we don't have to make a huge length of hoses it'll be two hoses or maybe three with a coupler so here we go found a spot 
So this is actually the location where your my old fuel lines were. And I already went through the painful process of pulling out the old fuel lines. I have a whole other video on how to do that, which is actually hysterical. So guys, subscribe if you have it, because one of these days I'll post that video. So anyway, this is the brake line. And I had to move that clip that was here. I put the filter right here. It's obviously pointed in the correct direction. That's the front of the car. Don't worry, everyone. Um, there are AN fittings on the ends of this. And this comes with the AN hose line kit from Fitech. And if you're fortunate enough to get it, the whole kit, it comes with the hose too that has that pre-wrap on it, which is the same material, uh, the non-stick material. So you can just wrap masking tape around here before you cut your line, but also has these caps. So I'm going to go ahead and take this advantage and I'm going to run this hose to the back of the car so we can figure out our hose length and then take it out and put the appropriate fittings on each end, mask those ends and put it back so uh, we don't get any dirt in the line. Here we go. All right, everyone. I decided to run from the rear to the front. It was much easier. I don't know if you can see up there, but um, there's the bulkhead. There's my old stainless system I had on the front pump I was able to recycle that which is cool uh, so there's the bulkhead fitting into the trunk and so I ran it over the exhaust plate don't worry it's four inches here three or four inches here but in between the body and the frame which I know is hard to see back in there if you can see that and then runs where the original fuel line went so that's next to the brake line and show you the front real quick so there's my hose length the same trick the fittings on there it's about the right length so I'll go back to where that bulkhead is and then add a piece of masking tape while it's up there so I know where to cut it luckily in this situation since we have so much hose we have more compliance so we don't have to get our cut super accurate as in the short runs so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then put it back in see how it looks all right, here we go. So I'm attached to the filter on this rear part. And then the back here, I'm going to add a strap. Very similar to these straps, but just smaller um, right in here to, to keep it in place. But I like it. Now the fun begins because we need to run from here to the throttle body. Um, and that's where we're going to have to do some playing because, as you guys know, my engine compartment is pretty cleaned up and I want to get to the rear of the throttle body. So I'm gonna go ahead and run hose again. I'm just gonna poke it up there, see what we have to work with, and then uh, I'll show you where it comes out on the top side. All right, so I couldn't run it up and poke it up. I had to run it the other way. So I ran it from this direction, across the bell housing, in between the body and the frame, and got over to the filter in one run, which is nice. Now the reason I had to run over here is you have to be aware that whatever fitting you use on, on one of these three corners, because those are the three inlet options, make sure your air cleaner fits on top. I could not use a straight or, or a uh, 45 or a 90 on the back, so I decided to use this front right corner, and that hides everything behind the engine, which is awesome in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and, and tape it right here, cut the hose, get this assembly together, and I'll show you the end result. Here's what it looks like on the bottom. That was actually pretty easy to run. And I went underneath the body and the frame over here. You can see it back in there, behind the engine, above the bell housing, and I'll show you up at top. Oh yeah, there we go, right behind the distributor, above the bell housing, right into the throttle body. Oh man, looks awesome. Plumbing's done. Oh my gosh. Obviously, you need to go through every connection and make sure they're tight. Next episode, I know one of you are concerned, because I am, about that Holly electric pump. The reason is the instructions say you need to mount it 12, within 12 inches of the bottom of the tank. I'm probably at 13. So we'll see how it works. I'm going to run a line in the tank. We'll, we'll fire it up and uh, see how much noise it makes, because I can't make too much noise if we're making videos in the car. Well, I guess it doesn't make sense. The engine's pretty loud, but you know what I mean. Anyway, 
Subscribe if you haven't, because next episode we're going to fire this thing. You know the drill. Build them fast. Drive them faster. See ya.